Disclaimer, I don't know shit, I ain't talking about shit, and I ain't said shit, but let's go. Richard Claxton Gregory, a.k.a. Dick Gregory. Dick received a scholarship for track and field at Southern Illinois University. He joined the fraternity Alpha Phi Alpha while attending. He only attended Southern Illinois University for two years before he was offered to enroll into the military. Mind you, enroll, not drafted. He was drafted his second year of college. He was stationed at Fort Hood, Fort Lee, and Fort Smith. After only serving a year and a half in the military, Dick Gregory returned to Chicago's nightclub scene doing his stand-up comedy. There, he met Hugh Hefner in 1961 that offered him a stand-up comedy on his Playhouse show. That turned to um, several different features. Uh, one instance was the Jack Parr show, as well as a feature and article in Time Magazine. A Sample Joke by Dick Gregory you can't even hate me for free. Cost $250 to join the Ku Klux Klan and you still got to buy your own sheets. He had everyone in the white crowd howling. <laughs> I'm not sure as if anyone other than me has paid attention to all of his accolades, but this is seeming like a Forrest Gump situation here. If you don't see it yet, give me a second. I got you. In 1963, he was arrested for the Selma voter rights protest. In 1964, he co-wrote a book with Robert Lipsty, which is a sports journalist. It was called The N-Word. Also in 1964, he was dispatched to help locate the missing rights workers in Mississippi to help along with the search, and they were recovered. In 1966, him and his wife were both arrested for a fish-in protest for the Native Americans, which came to full resolve. In 1967 and 1968, he ran for the mayor of Chicago as well as the presidential write-in for the elections against Nixon, and he erroneously won. In 1973, he writes his second book, The Vegetarian Diet. In 1975, he appeared on The Geraldo Show as well as a company with the tape to the JFK assassination, which was the first time ever aired on television. In 1979, he was invited to the attendance of the Amanda Festival alongside Bob Marley. In 1980, he negotiates and frees three uh, uh, hostages from Iran. In 1985, he introduced the Bahamian diet, a.k.a. the Dick Gregory juice. Also, Dick Gregory juice was invoked into the Ethiopian um, regimen for their malnutrition children. Y'all already know how it go. I ain't said shit, I don't know shit, and I usually don't talk about shit. But let's go. You guys check out this next clip. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think, I think, I don't think All right, so. y'all already know I paraphrase. Y'all take y'all time if you need to pause this, slow it down, but check it out about the mason grip. He did the master grip in that last video, you guys. Check it out. Not sure if y'all got y'all glasses on, but uh, if not, check this out. We checked the two people. They're from Australia heavily connected to the secret police in Australia. Mm. Heavily connected to the CIA. How do you, with your camera, never been in a country before, film it, they didn't know to take it, where 7 o'clock LA time is running all over the world? How do you know that? Yeah. All 7-Elevers have film. How come we never saw a film of him going in there or coming out? Hmm? Mm -hmm. And not till I mention it, I'm one of the most powerful voices because Social Network didn't get me for free. Hmm? Mm -hmm. So then they showed us some bullshit of him standing at the counter. Come on, y'all. They told us that he was looking. That Sunday was the Sunday of the All-Star Basketball. Said he was looking at the All Star game and doing halftime. He ran to, well, we all do that. Run down, fix your ham and cheese sandwich, or call somebody. Nobody better not call you while the Super Bowl is going on. But the minute it's going to a commercial, huh? 
So I said, okay, Ralph, I need you to do something for me. I need the time that he was killed. 7-17. Oh, why? The ball game didn't start till 8 o'clock. So how can he go doing the half? That's what I'm looking at, not the other bullshit, because I know who they are. Mm. They're all. And I check out Zimmerman. Hmm? Then we get into my room. Zimmerman lived in an all-black neighborhood. And everybody we interviewed said he's one of the finest in all. For four days after he was killed, he was in the morgue. John Doe, you wear that? Ooh, yeah. Disclaimer. Check this out. I think you said that this was the leaders who said that, uh, who went with King and against Mr. Muhammad around 90%. I just told you a little while ago, these leaders that they call leaders, this included Lena Horne, this included Dick Gregory, and this included comedians, comics, trumpet players, baseball players. Show me in the white community where a comedian is a white leader. Show me in the white community where a singer is a white leader, or a dancer or a trumpet player is a white leader. These aren't leaders. These are puppets and clowns that uh, have been set up over the white community and uh, over the black community by the white community and have been made celebrities and usually say exactly what uh, they know that the white man wants to hear. You'll find that oftentimes Negroes are as much on guard uh, around Negro interviewers who usually represent the bourgeois uh, element of Negroes as they are on guard around whites. Uh, usually Negroes know that when this bourgeois Negro walks through the door, he is not doing something that he's initiated himself, but he's involved in something in which the white man is the absolute author of and has sent him to the Negro community for some information. And when they give that Negro some information, usually they give him the information that they want the white want him to take back to the white man because that's who he's going to take it back to. Four more minutes. Auntie just um, to keep your glasses on in real time. Enough. Fix me some of that dick gravy. Shit that you.